local knowledge. <laughs> I wouldn't call it local knowledge. I'd call it being here once, looked whilst walking away knowledge. So this is my last morning in Sausage Flay. Tomorrow I fly home. And I'm gonna miss this place, it's absolutely gorgeous. But it's so vast, I could spend an entire year here and still not see everything. I'm actually on my way back to the same location that I was at yesterday morning. And that's because, I mentioned just before, this place is huge and it, the scale of it's phenomenal. So there's no way that I could explore and see everything. So I wanted to come back somewhere that had been at least then I have an idea of what the light does. And whilst I was here yesterday, I spotted a couple of compositions that looked really good as the sun came up and over. Uh, but unfortunately, by the time I spotted them, it was too late and the sun was too high and we were already on our way elsewhere. So yeah, looking forward to this. And the only one here is peaceful, it's quiet and it, it is just Gorgeous. So yesterday after shooting this June when I was walking back to the car, I turned around and saw that this tree here was actually bathed in that gorgeous morning light. But on this right hand side of the dune, that was still in shadow. By that time, it was too late for me to set up and shoot it, but it looked like it had a lot of potential. Um, I like this tree, it has a lot of character, it still has green on it, and it arcs over to one side. So, it looks, definitely looks like it has potential. But the advantage here is that I was at this location yesterday. So I know that the sun rises from over here and it comes up and over this dune and the light will hit this tree, but not the background of the dune. So yeah, local knowledge. <laughs> I wouldn't call it local knowledge. I'd call it being here once looked whilst walking away knowledge. <sighs> Sometimes I just have to stop and take it all in. There is nothing, no one, for miles and miles and miles. I can barely see the car. It's a tiny speck in the distance. <sighs> it's gorgeous. So I think this is the only image I'm going to go for. So I'm gonna set my camera up nice and early, frame my composition, and then I'm just gonna enjoy being here. Some, some alone time, I think we'll call it. Some me time. <laughs> time to reflect. Oh. I suppose I have to do my Christmas shopping when I get back. Ugh. Actually, no, let's not think about Christmas. Let's not think about Christmas. We're in the desert. We can't think about Christmas. So I'm just putting a polarizer around my lens. Those green leaves on the tree are gonna, they're gonna reflect some of the bright sky above. And there's a tiny bit of haze in the atmosphere because I'm shooting at about 150 mil. I just wanna cut through that haze with this polarizer. It should give me an image with more contrast and more saturation. I'll just show you what I mean. So here there's no polarization or little to no polarization. And if I spin it, you can just see the image becomes a tad more, it feels more rich, there's a bit more colour, a bit more contrast, a bit more saturation. The 
sun's just coming up and there's absolutely nobody around. Ah. This is what it's all about. This right now. Amazing scenery, peace and quiet, and hopefully a good image. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see about that one. So the light is coming up now and it's hitting the tree. You can see it hitting my face. And within a minute or two, this light's actually gonna be far too strong and far too harsh for this image. It'll be too contrasty. What you want is the gorgeous soft light just as it kisses the tree and the foreground, making for a lovely three-dimensional image. The background is still in complete shade. So yeah, this is just perfect F11. I'm just shielding my lens from the sun and I'm going to take this image. So I'm quite happy with that shoot. I think because I was here yesterday, I had an advantage. I, I had a much better idea of what was going to happen, how the light was going to interact with the landscape. And it's a fine example of why you should revisit locations time and time again. I mean, yes, okay, so I've only, <laughs> only been to this spot twice, but the first time I had no idea what was going to happen. But today, I knew exactly what was going to happen and I was able to arrive in good time, frame my composition and anticipate how the light was going to play out. So yeah, there's a lot to be said about going back to the same places time and time again. Anyway, I am starving. I'm gonna go back to the lodge, get some breakfast and then we have a long drive back towards the airport. So that was my last shoot in Namibia finished and my work for Discover the World complete. As we made our way to our final hotel close to the airport, I left with a great sense of satisfaction and was able to enjoy a well earned rest. I would crossed two items off my bucket list on this trip to see an animal hunting and to photograph vast desert sand dunes, both of which I will never forget. I will also never forget being charged by a black rhino. It is these moments and many others that I treasure so much, exploring places unknown and stepping outside of my comfort zone. Photography is so much more than simply taking images, it's about the people we meet, the places we see and the experiences we have. Technology changes, megapixels keep increasing and dynamic range continues to expand. And with this, your once shiny new top of the range camera might feel a bit obsolete. But don't worry, the beautiful landscapes we love to experience move at a much slower pace. And you can rest assured that the oceans we wade through, the mountains we climb, the woodlands we explore, and the sand dunes, which I have had so much pleasure out of, will be here long after us and our cameras have passed on. So, get outside, experience and enjoy it. There is so much to see.